but Julia Gillard joins me now. Good evening. Good evening. Um, you said um, that you talked about a murderous rage about the way you were treated sometimes. <laughs> what sort of things happened to you? What sort of things led to this rage? Um, Overwhelmingly, getting to be Prime Minister of my country was a wonderful opportunity and I got to enact policies that I deeply believe in. Particularly in education. Particularly yeah. in education and one of the reasons I've written a book about my experiences mm. so quickly is I wanted to reinforce the message for young women that if you're interested in politics, go for it. The upside is far more than the downside. But there was some downside and it was around what I've referred to in the book as this curious question of gender uh, and how how it reflects in politics and reflects in criticism of politicians. I mean, there was even you know menu lines in a restaurant uh, with your name attached to them, and then talking about your physical attributes in, in, in the menu. I mean, it's extraordinary stuff, isn't it? Uh, that was a uh, Liberal Party fundraiser, so our version of the Conservative Party and uh, the joke had in fact been ripped off from the United States because it was joke, mm. Mm. Uh, because it was first written about Hillary Clinton. Uh, so I think this is telling you that offensive statements about women in mm. politics is not confined to Australia. I think this issue of women in leadership mm. and making sure that women are fairly judged and not judged through a gendered prism is one of the big issues of our time and I'm sure we're going to see a lot more of it uh, as yeah. Hillary Clinton quests for the presidency of the United States. And I'll talk to you about that but just on that question of um, how you uh, had to deal with this when you were Prime Minister um, after you'd been as it were pushed out I mean you said very eloquently at the beginning of the book very clearly at the beginning of the book she said about crying because you cried in the past about various things as anyone would you said I'm not going to give any bastard that satisfaction I mean you clearly felt very angry in many ways about the way you've been treated. I felt uh, moments of anger, but looking back on it now, what I want the experience to stand for uh, is that women can do the job in politics, that women can take the tough times. I think I took some of the tough times uh, that people would see even under extraordinary pressure, like the day I lost the Prime Ministership, that I didn't crack, you know, that women can take it and women can be good reformers. And what we've got to get to is an age where women's achievements and things that women leaders do wrong are fairly judged. But I mean, you say that uh, this is a problem the world over, it's not just Australia, but is there something about Australian society and politics that lends itself to a more gendered response traditionally? I'm too much of a patriot to think uh, that that's mm -hmm. a, the right analysis. I think that this is a broader problem. Uh, yes, you know, we had a particular set of experiences in Australia. I led a minority government. We were pursuing nation-changing reforms like putting a price on carbon. They were very controversial. So there were some things that turned on the facts. But I think this issue about mm -hmm. uh, gender is much, much broader than anything but, to do with Australian politics. I mean, you'd politics. probably say yourself that you perhaps didn't tackle it head-on early enough. And I wonder, I mean, you know Hillary Clinton very well, she's a friend of his, I mean, has she expressed, have you talked about this kind of stuff? Uh, we have talked about it in the past and in uh, her own book, mm -hmm. uh, Hillary Clinton refers to my experiences mm -hmm. as Australian Prime Minister. I mean, I wouldn't presume to give uh, someone mm -hmm. of the long experience of Hillary Clinton advice, but what I do think looking back on my time mm -hmm. as Prime Minister is I assumed that the maximum reaction to being the first woman to lead Australia, both positive and negative, would be in the early days of my prime ministership and then it would kind of wash out of the system and you'd just get on with the job. What I actually found was the longer I was prime minister, gendered insults became a very convenient mm. weapon to go to when you were doing something politically controversial. So if I had my time again, I'd actually call it out earlier in my period as prime minister. I mean, you have to take tough things. You said, you know, it didn't let it phase you, but was it disturbing when you were called things like, you know, deliberately barren? Oh, look, when that statement was made, I didn't experience that as a sort of personal insult to me. I'd been around politics long enough to know that there's this uh, lively and unhealthy debate mm. uh, about women in politics. Mm -hmm. If you uh, don't have children, you seem to be out of touch. How can you possibly understand family life? If you do have children, well, hell, who's taking care of them yeah. while you're running around <laughs> exactly. doing politics? So I, I was sort of very knowing about that debate and consequently didn't experience it as a personal insult, but really was frustrated that 
that women, you know, me in that example, but women generally in politics were being forced through this loop again. And it's not just women in politics, it's women who are corporate leaders and women who are at the top of professions. At the end of the book, um, you say that the only sadness that you have is that in a sense you didn't play midwife to a new kind of Labour politics, that you didn't have enough time to, to reform things. Now, of course, Labour's out of power in Australia. Labour in Britain has had its worst defeat in 20 years. Um, is there any reason that you can think why Labour is taking such a drubbing, not just here but abroad? I think that there are some mm. common issues for social mm. democratic parties around the world. I mean, increasingly, uh, we are being called on to serve two constituencies, a sort of uh, upwardly mobile, globally engaged, rights-based constituency, as well as our traditional working class constituency. Mm -hmm. And these things can be uh, in tension. There can be very different views about a range of issues. Uh, for example, in Australia, there are quite different views about climate change and mm -hmm. carbon pricing with the very traditional trade union working class constituency anxious about change, whereas, uh, you know, the sort of inner city, uh, more educated, are much more interested in seeing bold action on climate change. So there's a balance. But we're not the only political party seeking balance. The conservative side of politics experiences some of this too. So you haven't any advice for any of either of whether it happens to be Liz Kendall or Yvette Cooper or, rather than two of the men about how they should go about a woman leading a party? Well, I wouldn't presume to give detailed advice, but I would say this to any woman who is uh, contending to be in the front mm -hmm. row of politics. I do think that on uh, gender issues, it's best to confront them you know, front up uh, if there is any differential treatment to deal with it in the early days rather than let it build. And a return to politics in Australia, do you rule it out? Oh, of course. You know, just like your uh, system here, the Westminster system, once you're done, you're done. Uh, I don't think anybody's talking about Tony Blair making a return to politics and just like that's completely impossible. Uh, there is no return to politics on my horizon, absolutely not. Julie Gillard, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.